Hey everyone, so today I am so excited about this lesson. I have wanted to teach this lesson since I first started videoing. And I think this is a huge confusable for lots of people about understanding your participles and your verbs. So we are going to dive in first and we're going to talk about your suffix I-V-E today. And we're gonna go over several words with that. And then we're also going to talk about our principal parts and our tenses in our verbs. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the I-V-E first. And when is it a suffix? When is it the unit sound? So when it's a suffix and a unit sound, it's the same thing, okay? So it, this as a suffix or its unit sound, it says if. Now, sometimes boys, it does, it is just part of the word and it's a unit sound. And the other times it's the suffix, okay? And then, or it's both, the I-V-E can be the suffix and the unit sound. No matter what, it is the unit sound if. Yeah. So the I-V-E right here, is it a unit sound? It is. If it says if, it's unit. But sometimes it is the unit and the suffix, and sometimes, well, sometimes it is both, and then sometimes it's just your unit sound. It's just part of the word, okay? So if we look at this word right here, how many suffixes do we have on that word? This is a really big, long word. It could be like, oh my gosh, it's so big, I can't read it. But since you know how to break apart your suffixes and you know your prefixes and you're learning your main Latin roots, how many suffixes do we have on this word? Like four. We have three. One, two, three. Okay, so now we have our prefix, our Latin root, suffix, suffix, suffix. But that looks like a big scary word, but it's not. What does the word say? Yes, in incisiveness. So cis is your root, okay? Incisiveness. Well, incisiveness says, this is plural. This is a quality. Yes? What's oh, the base root? Your, your root is cis, C-I-S. This is your prefix. Aren't there no base word? Yes, cis. Oh. Now, you're thinking your base word when you just have a regular e English word. Oh. Now, your root typically will focus on your, your Latin roots, right? Your base word is English words. Your root, okay, your main part of the word. Now, what part is this? Is this a unit? It is a unit in this word, but it's also part of the whole root right here. And this says motive. Now you have I-V-E here. Is this your suffix, your prefix? I mean, your, is this your suffix or your unit sound in this word? So this is neither. That's where this can be super confusing. Now we're going to drop your E-D right there but it still looks like well it's sitting at the end now your suffix as a you um if it's a suffix it typically this will fall at your end of your main word okay even if it is sitting on as a suffix typically you'll have these other suffixes even added on to that but it's typically at the end but this looks like it could be the unit sound the I-V-E suffix, because it's sitting at the end, but it's not. This right here is a vowel team. Now, we have V-E's. V's cannot be at the end of the English language. So, you can't spell um, a word with just a V. You have to have an E on the end. So that's why it says if in the first place, because we can't have a V to end a word. Like we, um, so, but this right here is a vowel team. And this says received. Your base word is receive. 
And this E right here is only there to keep that from being at the end of the word. So when we drop the E and we add our, our suffix ED. So that's why this one would be harder to read if you're thinking, well, that is our unit sound. It's not our unit sound because the I belongs to this E. What does the I belong to, boys? The E. The E. So can this be unit sound in here? No. It's not. What is the EI here? This is a vowel team, and if you're not careful, you're going to mess that up if it's by your V. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, how about that one? What do you think about this? Yeah, this is a unit sound, positive, but this kind of just goes with the word. This is your root right in here, and it, it goes with the word. It doesn't make sense with the posit. Like this doesn't make sense with moat. Okay, so this wouldn't be your, a suffix, this would be part of the word. This is a unit sound though, because they are unit sounds, even though they're suffixes. Just like ing is a unit, but it's still your ing suffix. Neither. You do not think it's either, very good. This is not either. Now, IVEs, if it's a suffix or if it's a unit sound, it typically will not be at the beginning of words. And this is towards the beginning of a word, especially if it starts a word, it is not going to be your unit sound, okay? Now, this is a really unusual word. It says Ivers. Now, this is a vowel team, but this is unusual because AI typically says A, but in this word, it says I. And so we have, it breaks right here, I-vers. And it's not even together. Typically that's together as a unit sound. So it's not unit. Yeah, this is a unit and a suffix. You have your prefix, you have your root, and you have your suffix. How about this word? What is it? Suffix. This is a suffix. It's the unit sound. You have your prefix, root, defective. What about this? Defensive. Yeah, this does say defensive. Is this your unit sound? It is your unit sound. It is your suffix, your prefix, your root, your suffix. Okay? This is your Latin root, Latin root, Latin root. This is Latin also but it's not part of the suffix, okay? How about this one right here? The I-V-E here? Suffix. It is, prefix, incisive. How about this I-V-E? No, this is a compound word. Well, you think, well, it's, if it's compound word, well, if this is a compound word, it's still, when it's towards the beginning, it's going to be, you're gonna break it apart. And this says river side. How about this one? This is a suffix. <laughs> You're right. So you have your prefix, your root, and your suffix. Subjective. Okay, this is your unit sound. How about this one? This is your unit sound, your suffix. Prefix, root, suffix, suffix. Now, this has your A-T-E suffix or as part of the word, a so, she, she, she a, a, tiv, associative, mm -hmm. okay? Do you guys see that? Where you can just break that apart. Prefix, root, suffix, mm -hmm. right? Suffixes. Okay, how about this one? That is one. Because you this is your actually your root. Act is your Latin root. Active. This is your suffix. This is your unit sound. Radio, radi is your this is an this is a compound word. But this is also your root. This is your root. 
This is your suffix. How about this? Yes. Okay. This is your prefix, your root, your suffix. Disruptive. How about here? Yes. Yeah. And oftentimes, if you're studying your chameleon prefixes, you can find them. Boom, boom. They're right. They're, you can't miss them. So you're like, ooh, that's my Latin, that's my Latin root right there. This must be my suffix. I, I just didn't think that you could take if off of right into act. You act. I mean, I see that, but I, it's just radio act. Well, this is a compound word, radio and active. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, and then this part is part of act. So this is your prefix, your Latin root, and your suffix. Offensive. See how this turned to schwa? We don't say offensive. You say offensive. What about this? Yeah. Yeah, it was on radioactive. Active. This is your suffix. Your unisyllable, active. Act is your root. How about this one? No. It's not. This is a vowel team right here. Boom. This says waves. Okay, it's not the same kind of waves that you see in the ocean. It's different. No, How about this, this one? Kind. No, that's not that same kind. It's wave. Yeah, this is wave. W-A-V-E. That's the wave we, we used. You waved your rights. Right. Your right. Miranda right. rights. You. No. You. No, that's waving your flag. W-A-V-E. <laughs> This is you waived your rights. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. If if you read your Miranda rights in in the law and you have now said, okay, you've waived your rights. And the water waves and the waves. Yeah, the these are different words. Are the same thing. Yes, you're right. Yeah. So what do heat waves kind of be like? Um, w A V E S. That with this. This is a completely different kind of wave. Okay. Okay? Now, be live. This is, this is I. Is this one? No. No, this is not our unit sound. It says be live. How about this one? Yeah, it is. This is our suffix. Your base word is create. Creative. You're, you're dropping your E and you're adding on your I-V-E. Cre-a-tive. Okay, how about this one? This one is, you have your prefix, your root, your suffix, and your suffix. Effectively, effectively. See how you can break that apart. Actually, it goes effectively. That's actually how you break it. So this is your prefix. This is your root. This is your suffix, and this is your suffix. But it breaks right here, right here and right here, when you're actually breaking it into syllables. But that doesn't mean the F-E-C-T isn't your full root. Okay, how about this one? No. This is a no, because this breaks right here. Divert. It is not part of it. So the four principal parts of a verb, that's what we're gonna talk about here. First, present, second, is present participle, third is past, and fourth is past participle. Do you guys get that? So this is really important that you understand what the different parts of a verb is because this is what you see at the bottom when you're looking up in the dictionary and they're telling you what are your different parts of the verb. And that's what this is, your principal parts. And so we're gonna go through and help you understand what that means when you're looking them up in the dictionary because it can be confusing, okay? So now we're going to first off look at the word jump. So I just picked a random verb and so the present is jump. 
So present participle is jumping, okay? It's in the present and it's a participle with your ing, okay? Past, jumped, and past participle has jumped. Now, really we're focusing on our participle with our ed and our ing because our, our auxiliary verbs will change up as we put our sentences together and as we understand what this means, okay? So our participles are, for present participle is jumping, past participle is jumped, okay? So, and they will always have a helping verb. Now, what's really interesting about our participles, participle is part of the Latin language and it actually means sharing. So if you understand what participle actually means, we're sharing this verb with adjectives and sometimes adverbs. And you're mostly going to see them in adjectives. Give me an example of jumping as an adjective. And that's a verb. The jumping dolphin. Okay, the jumping dolphin. So that would be an adjective. So, the jumping graceful dolphin, would that be an adjective or an adverb? It would still be an adjective because it would still be jumping dolphin. So, and you're going to see them as adjectives. Sometimes you'll see them as adverbs, but they, they fall into different parts of speech. But a lot of people get so confused on what the participle means. And so let's go through some sentences. So you're going to have your present participles are with your ing's and your past participles are your ed's. Kylie, jump through the hoop. See right here, jump stands alone. It doesn't need any helping verbs. It is in the present. Kylie is jumping through the hoop every recess. See, is jumping. So when you're using a present participle as a verb, you need to have your auxiliary verb to help you. She is jumping. Now I made this be in the present, so we can, we'll change your auxiliary verb depending on if your subject is plural, then your auxiliary verb needs to be plural, right? Okay, now Kylie jumped through the hoop last week. See, now that's just in your past. That's not your past participle. See, this is your simple past, your simple present. This is your participle, your present participle. Kylie has jumped through the hoop. Now, has jumped, you're going to need, for your past participle, you're going to need a helping verb if you're using it as a verb. Now, if you're using it as an adjective, you don't use your be verbs, okay? You just use your, them as an adjective, okay? So let's talk about using jumped as an adjective. So here it's used as the past participle, Kylie has jumped through the hoop. You can use this as an adjective, okay? This is much easier to use as an adjective than this one. Okay, but you can use these. Now, and now remember, that's the reason why it's called participles because, they, um, because they're sharing. They're not just verbs. They can be adjectives, sometimes adverbs. Okay, so now let's look at the next one. So we, I use the, the verb wave. Now wave could be either a noun or a verb. Now as, as a noun, if you say the wave in the ocean, now that's a noun. But if you say wave your arm, see how it's doing something. So that would be a verb. So depending on how you want to use it in a sentence is what you'll do. Okay, so we have the first present is wave. Second present participle is waving. Now, I'm only saying that because with your helping verb, because when you look at in the dictionary, if you see the present participle, it's going to just have waving. 
but I want you to remember, you have to have your helping verb or your auxiliary verb, they're the same thing. You have to have it before your present participle for it to make sense. You can't, it doesn't make sense without it. Now, then you would have your participle waving all by itself, okay? The waving child, the waving policeman, okay? Now, pat, the third is past and we have waved. The fourth is your past participle and we have have waved. The same thing here, you have to have a helping verb if you're going to use it as a verb. Now, you have your waved that you can use as an adjective right here or an adverb depending on the sentence. Okay, so now let's look at four more sentences with each um, with each principal part that we have. So these are principal parts of the verb. Wave at the crowd. So this is telling, you're telling her something, because where's the, what's the subject? You. you wave at the crowd. So somebody's telling you to do this. You wave at the crowd, okay? So see how it doesn't have any help right here. So this is sitting in the present. It's called the simple present right there. So the policeman is waving to the crowd during the parade. Now I made this singular. So you have your auxiliary verb that is singular. Singular meets singular and we're using our, prince, our present participle right here for is waving. This is a principal part. It's the second principal part. The policeman waved at the crowd. Okay. See right here how this doesn't have any sort of helping verb right here. Do you see that? So this just sits in the past and see, this is why it's confusing when you look in the dictionary where it says waved and then you have the past participle is waved. Well, they're the same thing in a sense, but this is your simple past. It doesn't have an auxiliary verb helping it out. So now I've chose the policemen have waved at the crowd. So we have, this is plural now. And so I chose a plural verb, have waved. And see how you have to have, with your participle, you have to have an auxiliary verb to help you make sense of it. You can't say the policeman waved, at, well you can, but it's not saying the same thing. It's really stopping it. It's putting a stop to what's going on. Okay, here you can't say it at all. The policeman waving to the crowd, you can't even say waving without your auxiliary verb. Here you can, and that's why there's two different kinds, because you can say just waved at the crowd, but this is simple if you're not using auxiliary verb to help this verb out, okay? Are you guys getting that? Your past participles, if you're using it as a verb, you have to have your auxiliary verb to make sense of the sentence on what you really need it to say. This have means it's stopped, it's done, it's over. Now, with that, this takes us into um, our different tenses. So we talked about our, our present tense is our simple and our past is our simple and then we have the future and the, we use the word will with ever, whatever word, like wave, will wave. So will or shall will always be attached to the future, okay? So, but if we look at our progressive tense, I'm gonna start with the future first because oftentimes that's last and so it doesn't, I don't think we remember it as much because the things that we talk about first often gets remembered so I'm starting more towards the end. And we're, we're gonna talk about 
The plural future is will be. The singular future is will be. It's the exact same thing. So this is really easy to remember. You don't have to be, oh, what should I use with that? If you want progressive tense, you are going to use for the future will be. So I will be waving. That's progressive tense. Anything with progressive, you are going to have the ing attached to it. Now, that's where it gets a little bit confusing. Now, you need to remember progressive is your constant, you're moving forward. You, you're not stopping. ing is continuous. That is the word that you need to remember that with your progressive tenses is a continuous action and it is always connected to your ing's. Now, this is confusing when you are putting it, um, trying to figure out, well, what's my principal part? Well, really the principal part is the waving and you can use it as an adjective. So now look how, look at this. So now we have the future, you're gonna put will be waving. That's how you would use that. And it doesn't matter if you, see how if we, we did the policeman is waving or the policeman will be waving. The policemen will be waving. It doesn't matter if your subject is singular or plural, you can use both of them. But it does matter if you're in the past or the present. So now for the progressive tense, when you're using your ing, you want to use for the past, you want to use was or were. So was is singular, were is plural. You have to remember this. This has to be memorized or you will not get your verbiage or how you write your sentences correct. Now, then we have for the present, am, is, and are. Am and is is singular, are is plural. Let's go through those again. For the progressive tense, that means the ing, the continuous action, you have plural, you're going to use are and were, and that means you're going to use the plural subject with the plural verb with your, um, well, that's the I ing, with your present participle. Okay, now singular, you're only going to use am, is, and was. But this is where it's confusing. Am can only be used with first person and we went over all of our persons and you need to review that. If you don't understand your persons, you're not going to get this correct. So this would have to be changed to I, well, let's see. I am waving. See, policeman is sitting in third person. That's why we're going to use the third person is. Okay? Or, and then we can say the policeman was waving if we're going to change it to the past. Look at our perfect tense. Our perfect tense are our past participles using the helping verb right here. Our perfect tense cannot be used without this auxiliary verb. Nice. So those are our verbs that we use with our present participles and our past participles. Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, and been. Okay? Those are our auxiliary verbs that need to be remembered for that. So now let's look at our plural future. It is will have. Singular future, will have. Those are the same. So if we looked at this sentence, and remember, your perfect tenses, they have to be your EDs, right there. They're your past participles. So if you're going to go perfect, you know that they have to be the ED, or we have our irregular verbs. You guys remember what those are, like a write, wrote, and written? Written would be the past participle. Wrote would be the past, okay? Write would be present, and writing would be our present participle. 
So you just need to remember that the perfect tense is our ED. So if we look at this, this is our perfect tense. So if we say the policeman will have waved, and that puts that in the future, the policeman will have waved. And it doesn't matter, or if we could say the policeman will have waved, the policemen will have waved. It does not matter on your, if your subject is singular or plural, but it does matter when you have it in the past or the present. Now with the past, you use the word had, and it doesn't matter if it's singular or plural, but you need to remember that you need to have had if you want it to sit in the past. Okay. Now, if you want your stuff to sit in the present, you're going to use have and has. Now, one of the things that I didn't bring up that is really important that you are going to have in your simple tense, you're going to have past, present, and future. So you're going to have past, present, and then you're going to have will wave for your future. For your progressive tense, you're going to have past, present, and future. So there's another three tenses. With your perfect tense, you're going to have the past, present, and future. And you're going to use different auxiliary verbs to make the sentence how you want it to be. Does that make sense? Okay, so now if we want to understand the present and you want it to be in use your past participle sitting in the present tense, you have to either use have or has. Now, I used it here to sit in the present tense. The policemen have waved at the crowd. Now, right here is plural, so I have to use the plural verb in the present tense. See how right here we have have and has? So you have to use one of those two. So, but here I said, Kylie has jumped through the hoop. Right there, I used it in what tense? When you use has. Present. You use it in the present, and what person is it? Can you show me the sentence? Right here, Kylie has jumped. So this is third. the present, and it's third person. Very good. Now, this one is third person, but since it's plural, I have to use have. Do you see the difference? I can't say the policeman has waved. I have to use have when it's plural. Okay, so when we look at this, you have, when you have plural, you have to use had and have. Had is the past, have is the present. When you have singular, you use had, have, and has. Have is first person, has is third person, okay? This all needs to be memorized or you're not going to get that right. Now I have another verb that we're going to focus on. Now the verb is say and it is the first present for say. The second is the present participle am saying or if you're going to use it as an adjective, it would just be saying. The third principal part of a verb is the past for said. And the fourth principal part is have said. And if you're going to use it as an adjective or an adverb, you're going to just say said, okay? Now remember, participle means you're sharing. You're sharing this with something else. With our auxiliary verbs, we're going to use our auxiliary verbs to make everything make sense. So also what's really interesting, and we'll go into another lesson that really um, talks about this in depth, but we're going to talk about the voice. We have another part of our verb, and, we're, and we'll, we'll parse our verbs a little bit later, so you're gonna understand how to parse a verb. And remember, parsing means you're going to take it apart, so you're really understanding. And you're kind of already doing this now by understanding your, um, your 
simple, your progressive, which means the continuous motion, your perfect tense to understand what that means. Does that make sense? You guys understand that? Okay, so our voices, we have, do you guys remember what our voices are? Active. Active, passive. Yeah, active and passive. That's what our voices are. And Paul, you went through that today with your class. We have our active and passive voice. Now, most of the time, our participles will sit in our passive voices. Okay? They connect to the passive voice often. So oftentimes, our participles will connect to our passive voice. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so now let's look at this sentence. Just say you don't want to go. So here we have say in the present. See, we don't have any auxiliary verb helping this verb say. Okay, so just say you don't want to go. So say is your simple present and you're not using an auxiliary verb here. Now the next sentence, I am saying I do not want to go. Well here we're using am saying for our present participle. Now why, what is am? It's an auxiliary verb, but what person do I have to use with am? I have to use first person. So I can use, um, with am, it has to be first person singular, right? To use am. First person singular, and this is first person. I can't say I is saying. See how it won't work. So Kylie is jumping. See how Kylie is third person. This is first person. I am saying. But for it to be our present participle, you have to be using your ing for this to be present. And right here, I said no, past. There is no auxiliary verb helping this past. I have said no. For it to be sitting with our participle, you need it to be right here. You need to have this auxiliary verb. I have said no. Does that make sense? Now, what tense did we have this in? I have said. It's in. Right, right here. Perfect. So, what's your subject? It's first. It's perfect singular. Oh, okay, so it's perfect tense, singular, and um, you're using have, right? Yeah. Because you have to use have as in first person. Does that make sense? Okay. So, I am saying, let's talk about this again. This is first person. That's why we have to have am. If it's going to be third person, you have to be able to say he, she, or it if you want to use um, a pronoun, right? He is saying. You can't say he am saying, she am saying. It am saying, it doesn't make sense. That's why you have to understand your persons to be able to make this work. I am saying, this is first person. Now, if we want this to be plural, we would replace this with we are saying, and you go plural, okay? But it's still sitting in your you have to understand your tenses with that. I really hope that you study this lesson because when you really study your different words and especially when you study your simple tenses, your progressive tenses, which means you're moving forward and your perfect tenses, which means you've stopped, you've ended, it's over, then you are going to be able to understand how to put your sentences, your sentences together a lot better and you're going to be able to not have to worry about having Grammarly all the time. Not only that, you're going to be able to 
to fix your mistakes because sometimes Grammarly will want you to see, change your subject to fit your verb. That has happened to me and I'm like, I know I want that verb. But if you know how to do this, what I was teaching you, you'll be able to catch those other errors that sometimes the computer can't catch for you. Anyways, we'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye. bye.